open file explorer and look at photo we want to add. Drag photo into media pool in DaVinci Resolve. Click on import the photo in the media pool. Drag photo onto timeline on the top of the video track. Ensure photo layer is selected on the timeline. Now navigate to the top right and find zoom parameter. Hover over the number and click, then drag up or down, zoom in or out. To change photo position, go to position parameters. Hover over X or I value, click and drag reposition horizontally or vertically. If you want to adjust angle, find the rotation parameter. Hover over the angle number, click and drag the rotate photo. Playback the video to ensure photo appears as desired. Adjust size, position or rotation further if needed. And once satisfied with placement, save your DaVinci Resolve project. To import music, you can drag it directly from your file explorer into DaVinci Resolve Media section or use the File, Import and Media option. Once music is in the media section, click and drag it into your timeline. Choose starting point on the timeline for a music track. Hover over the music track and when cursor change to the to two arrows, left click and drag it down to decrease volume. Adjust volume level until it complements your video content. Minus value like 20 dB are often suitable. To change starting point of music track, hover over the beginning clip, click and drag to the desired position. Reposition is needed to sync with your video. Now play back your video to ensure music complements the content. Adjust volume and timing as necessary. Navigate to the media pool. If you don't see media pool, click on icon to reveal it. Identify your timeline. It will have a special icon. Right click on the timeline and navigate to timelines and select timeline settings. Uncheck use project settings. Adjust timeline resolution as needed. For example, for 1x1 one one aspect ratio, set both width and height to 180. Now click OK to apply changes. To feed your existing video into new aspect ratio, click on video clip and adjust zoom to fit within the new dimension. Now click on the downward arrow icon in the top left corner of viewer and select crop. You can now drag the corners of crop box to adjust crop as desired. Click on the clip in the timeline to select it. Then navigate to the inspector panel. Click on the cropping tab. Here, you can adjust crop from each side using the sliders. You can also adjust softness, feathering of edges if needed. To scale crop video to fill entire frame, click on the arrow icon again and select transform. Now you can drag the corners of video to scale it up and fill the frame. And adjust video as needed to achieve desired composition. Click on the video clip in your timeline that you want to adjust. Navigate to Video tab in the Inspector panel. Inside Video tab, find Transform tab. In the Transform tab, adjust zoom settings. You can unlink the X and Y axis if needed. You can also scroll down in the video tab to find the real-time and scaling options. 
Click on the scaling and choose either fill or stretch based on your preferences. Fill enlarge the video to fill screen, maintaining the original aspect ratio. Stretch the video to fill the screen, potentially distorting the aspect ratio. Play video to preview changes and ensure it's according to your preferences. Drag video you want to as base layer onto timeline. Drag the video you want to overlay onto timeline. This video will be placed on the top of base video. Select top overlay video on the timeline. Navigate to inspector panel. Under transform, find zoom setting. Decrease zoom x value to reduce size of overlay video. The I value will automatically adjust. Ensure the link toggle is selected. Still in the inspector, adjust the position X and I values to place the overlay video where you want to it on the frame. Play your timeline to preview overlay. Navigate to Edit tab in the lower part of interface. Choose Clip in your timeline you want to stretch. Now move to the Inspector tab. Typically, it's located in the top right corner of the interface. Within the Inspector tab, find and click on the Video tab. In the Zoom setting, you will see Link icon. Click on it to deactivate it. This allows you to stretch video along one axis independently. After deactivating Link icon, you can change either X or I axis to stretch video horizontally or vertically. Click and drag on numerical value or input new value manually. As you make adjustment, preview video in the timeline to ensure it meets your desired stretch. You will necessary fine-tune stretch settings until you achieve desired results. Add video clip to your timeline in DaVinci Resolve. If you only want a reverse specific part of video clip, split it to create separate segment. If you wish to preserve original clip, make a copy of it. Right click on selected clip and choose copy. Move the playhead to the desired location and right click again. Then choose paste. Right click on the video clip you want to reverse. Select Change Clip Speed from Context menu. In the pop up window, look for the option Reverse Speed. Click on it to enable reverse effect. Press Change button to apply reversal. Now play entire clip or reverse segment to see the effect. You should observe video playing backward. Open the Inspector tab. This can be found on the top right side of interface. Click on the clip in the timeline for which you want to add keyframes. Move Playhead to the point in the timeline where you want to start zoom effect. In the Inspector tab, find property you want to animate. Click on the diamond icon next to property. This set initial keyframe. Move playhead to the next point in the timeline where you want zoom to be at its maximum. Move playhead to where you want to effect to end or return to its original state. Adjust property to desired settings to create third keyframe. Use timeline or arrow key to navigate between keyframes.
To fine-tune animation, you can adjust properties at each keyframe. Resolve will automatically create the animation between them. Play Timeline to review zoom effect created by keyframes. If you need to make changes, go back to Inspector tab, navigate to the keyframes and adjust properties. You can add keyframes for various effects such as position, opacity, color, correction. Click on the color section in the workspace. In the bottom right corner of color section, locate keyframe options. Select the parameter you want to keyframe. Move playhead to desired point in the timeline. Right click on the parameter and choose Add Dynamic Keyframe. Adjust color settings as desired for the keyframe. Now you can play timeline to see how keyframes affect the color changes. Navigate to the top and select Media Pool. Ensure Media Pool is active and visible. If not, activate it so you can see your media. Identify the clip showing media offline status. Right click on the offline clip you want to fix. After right clicking, choose the Relink Selected Clips option from the menu. You can either manually locate a missing clip or select Drive and folder to initiate search. Find exact location of missing clip. Select clip and press select folder. Navinci Resol will perform comprehensive search. Once found, clip will be reloaded in Davinci Resolve. If some clips couldn't be found, notification will appear. Press close. Confirm that media is correctly linked by playing back the clip in the timeline. Click on the speaker icon on the computer to see what output sound device you are currently using. Open DaVinci Resolve and go to Preferences. In Preferences window, navigate to Video and Audio tab. Under Audio, locate Audio Device section. Switch audio device to one you are currently using. If there is option for audio device system, ensure it's set to correct system. Now play your video in DaVinci Resolve again to check if sound issue is resolved. If your footages on the timeline don't have sufficient overlapping data, you won't be able to add transition directly. Attempting to stretch first clip into the second one won't work. Cut both clips at desired point. Place them together to create small overlapping section. Now you can successfully add transition between clips. Adjust transition duration as needed. If transition appears very small or isn't stretchable, it may be due to limit available data. Cut small portion from either first or second clip to provide more data for transition. Add transition and now you can easily adjust its length. Go to the top of DaVinci Resolve interface. Click on Edit menu. In drop-down that appears, select Undo option. This is usually the first option in the list. Alternatively, you can use keyboard shortcut. On Windows, press Ctrl-Z and on the Mac, press Command-Z. If you need Undo multiple action, you can repeatedly use 
the undo option or keyboard shortcut. To redo changes, you can use the redo option in the same menu, shortcut Ctrl Shift plus Z or Command Option plus Z. Go to the Color tab in DaVinci Resolve. Click on Window in the toolbar. Choose the Pen tool from Options. On the preview screen, draw a mask or an object that you want to remove. Click on Track tab. Click on Track Forward to initiate tracing process. Image Resolve will track the object across the entire scene. When it's done, navigate to Effects panel and search for Object Removal Effect. Drag Object Removal Effect onto your node. Click on Scene Analyze to let DaVinci Resolve analyze scene and remove object from every frame of your video. Go to Edit tab in DaVinci Resolve. Locate your footage containing green screen background on the timeline. In the top left corner, click on FX Library tab. Here, search the research bar and type in 3D gear. Once you found 3D gear effect, click, hold and drag it over the green screen footage on your timeline. Highlight green screen footage again. Click on icon representing open FX overlay. Once your screen preview, use tool like pen or brush to draw a line or a green screen element you want to remove. After drawing a line, preview your video to ensure a green screen background has been successfully removed. You can make any additional adjustment as needed. Navigate to Fusion page by selecting at the bottom of screen. In the node area, click on Medial node to highlight it. Hold down Ctrl key and press spacebar to open Select Tool menu. Here, type Magic Mask and select it to add the tool to your node tree. Go to Preview screen. Use the Magic Mask tool to draw around your object. You want to isolate it from background. Move to the Tracing section. Change tracing mode to better. Adjust the refine range to 45. Click on track forward to start tracking process. Now DaVinci Resolve will automatically track the object and remove background from each frame of your video. In any page, locate clip with background you want to remove. Move this clip to video layer 2. You can do this by dragging it to desired layer. Now click on the Fusion tab at the bottom of screen. In the Fusion tab, hold down Ctrl key and press Spacebar to open Select Tool menu. Here type Magic Mask in the search bar and select it to add it to your notes. In the preview window, your cursor will change. Dropper icon. Click and drag row, trace around the object you want to keep. Magic Mask tool will automatically remove anything outside of trace row. Click back on the Edit tab to return to Edit page. Now that background is removed, you can add new background to Video Layer 1. Import video with black background into DaVinci Resolve project. Drag video on the timeline on the top. Now head over to Fusion tab. Here connect media to your media out node. Now press Shift plus space on your keyboard. Search for Lumakir. Open Lumakir settings by selecting node and going to Inspector panel. You can adjust settings 
fine tune. Now let's go play back our video. And as you can see, black background is removed. Go to effects panel in Damage Resolve and scroll down and click on Open Effects. In the effects library, search for Camera Shake effect. Add Camera Shake effect to your video clip. While effect may work, it may moving too fast for desired floating effect. Highlight your video clip. Go to the Inspector panel. Click on Effects to reveal effect settings. Scroll down and find settings labeled PTR speed. Lower value of PTR speed to slow down movement. Ensure that player head is located between two clips where we want to insert the new clip. If the player head is not already between the clips, you can click and drag it manually to move desired position. Double click on clip you want to insert into timeline. Drag selected clip over timeline viewer. Before dropping clip, ensure that insert mode is selected. This mode is often found in a top right corner of timeline interface. Now release mouse button to drop the clip. New clip will be inserted between two existing clips at the position of player head. Enable the media pool. Drag and drop your video onto timeline. In the edit panel, go to FX library, navigate to generators and solid color. Drag solid color generator onto your timeline. This will create solid color background. With solid color generator selected, go to inspector panel, click on the color box to change background color. Color picker will appear. Choose this area color for your solid color background. If needed, you can adjust duration of solid color background by dragging its edge in timeline. Now play your timeline to preview video with edit solid background. Go to effects panel, expand toolbox section. Select titles and click and drag text plus effect onto your timeline. Now navigate to the inspector panel. Here, make any changes to text using available parameters. Click on Layout tab. Adjust X and I position controls to set starting point of your animation. Click the keyframe button to set starting position keyframe. Move timeline slider ahead certain number of frames. Modify X and I position controls to new location of your text. Now go to Settings tab. Check off Motion Blur option. Adjust quality parameter to your desired value. Modify Shutter Angle to 360. Go to the bottom of Damage Resolve. Click on Edit Page. Identify clips you want to merge. Click and drag to select all clips you wish to combine. Once clips are selected, right click on any of highlighted clips and from the context menu choose New Compound Clip. Dialog box will appear to name the compound clip. Type suitable name for compound clips. Press create to confirm. 
Selected clips are now merged into a single compound clip. Compound clip will be named as per your input. Check the timeline or media pool to confirm that clips have been merged into a single compound clip. Use a razor tool to make a cut where you want reverb effect to start. Delete remaining part of on the right. Go to few second back. Make another cut. Duplicate second part by dragging it down while holding the old button. Highlight duplicate audio and create volume keyframe. Move one frame forward and reduce volume to around minus 90. Go to effects library under audio effects. Find and add a reverb effect to the duplicated audio. Adjust size manually, increase it to maximum reverb time, increase it to maximum 4000. Experiment with brightness, distance and reverb tone. Adjust dry and wet. Fine tune reverb slider. Now when you're done, Play audio and make further adjustment to reverb effect parameters based on your preferences. Go to the Fairlay tab, where your voice recording is located. In the mixer, locate audio channel with your voice recording. Click on the plus sign next to effect and select the audio channel. Navigate to Restoration and then Noise Reduction. Turn on the Auto Speech mode. For noise reduction. And you can preview your recording with noise reduction effect applied. Compare recording with and without noise reduction effect to access the improvement. Make any additional adjustment as needed for best results. Have your audio and video clips onto timeline in case there is voiceover and video track. Now select all media clips you want to synchronize. This can include voiceovers, background, music or any other audio. Right click on the highlighted clips and choose Auto Align Clips from context menu. In the submenu select based on waveform. DaVinci Resolve will automatically align and synchronize the selected clips based on your waveforms. In the toolbox, select Titles. Add basic title to Timeline. Go to the Inspector panel. Make any changes to text as desired. Click on Settings in the Inspector panel. Click on Keyframe button next to Zoom. Parameter. Change initial value of zoom to 70. Move timeline slider ahead 3 frames. Change value of zoom to 120. This creates zoom in effect. Move timeline slider ahead 3 more frames. Change value of zoom back to 1. This reset zoom. Go to Effects panel, in the search bar, type Text Plus. Click and drag Text Plus effect onto your timeline. Now navigate to the Inspector panel. Make any changes to text using the available parameters. Now scroll down in the Inspector until you find Write On effect. Click and drag right circle all the way to the left. Click the keyframe button next to write on effect. This sets starting point for type write effect. Move time on slider ahead about one second. Slide the right circle back to right. This action animates text 
as if it's being typed on. Open DaVinci Resolve, navigate to Edit tab at the bottom of screen. In the top left corner, click on the Effects. Under Open FX, search for Vignette. Once you find Vignette effect, drag it onto video clip where you want to apply it. With the Vignette effect applied, go to Inspector tab, adjust settings to customize Vignette effect to your liking. You can modify parameters such as size, softness, blend. Now you can preview this effect to see how it looks on your video. You can make further adjustments as needed until you achieve desired results. From here, navigate to Color Correction Panel. This typically is located at the bottom of screen. Here, use tools in the Color Correction Panel to select the area of teeth you want to whiten. You can use shapes like circle or rectangle for precise selection. Once the area is selected, go to Curves option and choose Hue and Saturation. Click on the teeth area in the image to add control points. Adjust saturation settings for selected area to decrease saturation effectively. Play around with saturation settings until you achieve desired level of teeth widening. Preview the changes to ensure the teeth look naturally and evenly whitened. Navigate to FX library and open OpenFX. In the search bar, type Video Collage and drag it onto your top footage. Highlight top footage and go to Effects. Change workflow to create tile. Set number of rows to 1 and number of columns to 3. Customize your split screen. Right click on the customize video, click copy, select your second video, right click and choose paste attributes. Ensure that video attributes are selected and click apply. Repeat the process for third video. You can readjust the position or customize further if needed. If anything seems off, go to globals and make adjustment. In the inspector, you can fine-tune the position using X and Y values. Center your video footage or adjust as needed. Go to the Firelight tab in DaVinci Resolve. Right-click on empty space on the left side, select Edge Track and choose between Mono and Stereo. Double click on New Audio Track and rename it if needed. In the mixer on the right side, select Newly Created Audio Channel. Click on Input and choose your microphone from the list. Close window after selecting your microphone. Now press R on the audio channel to start recording. Speak into a microphone to record your voiceover. Press spacebar or click on stop button to end recording. Mute other channels if you don't want to hear background music while recording. Go to the FX library and select the audio channel. Distortion, noise reduction. Enable it by selecting or checking box to activate it. Animate channels and review your recording. Make adjustment as needed. Go to Delivery tab. 
Choose portion of video you want to render. Click entire timeline or set an in and out range. Select custom export settings for more options. Enter file name for your video. Click browse to choose export location and save file. In video tab, choose QuickTime format and H264 codec. Set resolution, for example, to 4K or 1080. Frame rate and quality settings. Adjust bitrate based on your video quality preferences. Click Add to Render Queue. Check Edit Video in Render Queue. You can add more videos or click Render All. Once rendering is complete, it will be marked as complete. 